liftoff of the Delta rocket carrying Glast. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Discovery Festival 2021. My name is Jessica Sosa, and I am here with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central New Mexico. Welcome, teachers and students. We're so excited to have you here. We're really excited to have our presenting sponsor with us this morning, Honeywell. They have a panel of young STEAM professionals who are excited to share more with you about what it's like to actually work in the STEAM field. So with that being said, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please leave them in the chat. We'll have a special Q&A section at the end of the presentation, and we'll ask those questions live. That being said, let's pass it over to you, Honeywell. Thank you. Hi there. Good morning. Um, my name is James Nance. I'm an electrical engineer, too, at Honeywell FMNT. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from New Mexico State University, and I'm currently pursuing my master's in electrical engineering and automatic control from Purdue. I've been with Honeywell about two and a half years. I got an internship my junior year of college and uh, accepted a job and then came in full time after that. So um, I work at Honeywell, FMNT, so that's Federal Manufacturing and Technologies. We're uh, federal contractors for the Department of Energy. Um, down here, uh, we have a location in Kansas City, and then um, everyone I've, on the panel, I believe, is uh, in New Mexico, uh, which is our other location. One of our main customers is the Office of Secure Transportation, or OST. And so uh, down in New Mexico, that's where a lot of our, our work is centered around. Uh, what they do is they secure, um, they, they transport nuclear material across, uh, across the nation. And so we help support them by, you know, maintaining trailers, at everything from, uh, you know, test sets to um, test out all of the equipment that's going into these trailers. It's a lot of maintenance, maintenance schedules. Um, so we have really capable facilities to handle, you know, semi trucks coming in and out. Uh, that's a lot of the exciting work that we do. Myself, I work in the test engineering department. So I work with, we're the production agency for Sandia National Labs um, that some of you may have heard of. So we work closely with them. We work clo closely with our coworkers out in Kansas City. Um, and then that also includes uh, traveling to different vendor sites. We have different vendors all across the country that our engineers go out <clears throat> and travel to and our calibration technicians. Down in New Mexico, we also have our emergency response group and they help uh, support the brave men and women that in the event of 
any um, events, they can they can get out quickly and help uh, neutralize whatever is happening. So we uh, have wear a lot of different hats down in New Mexico. Uh, we also have the uh, a team of people that help support the actual OST agents. And so they deal with a lot of the software side, communications, making sure that everyone um, is uh, their job is as easy as it can be while they're while they're protecting our nation. Um, and that's that's kind of a brief overview of what Honeywell Optum and T does. We have uh, a pretty good YouTube channel. I recommend checking it out. They have some fun little side experiments you can check out as well as uh, New Mexico overview uh, that shows you a lot more of what we do and um, also in Kansas City. All right, so we have a few questions to cover. One of the first one is what future do you see for the job market in a STEM related career? And then what trends do you see developing over the next few years? Um, I would say the future in STEM, uh, you know, overall very very bright uh it's an exciting i it's an exciting time to be in stem i'm a little bit biased because i'm an electrical engineer and i'm going into automatic uh controls uh that's i, I work in test equipment so that's directly in automation and then i'm for um, honeywell is helping me further my education uh and can and get that get that masters um so with that said i think that one of the big opportunities going forward in the future of STEM is um, automation, it's something that I'm really excited about. Um, with these kinds of innovations, we're gonna see a lot of, of new jobs come out, new skills needing people to take up the mantle for. Um, some things that we've started looking into at FMNT is, is we have a department looking into, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, something people hear a lot of talk about nowadays is artificial intelligence and then, um, of course, <clears throat> renewable energy, um, something that I think helps with understanding what the, the future of the job market may be is, is utilizing some resources. And one of those resources that really helped me when I was trying to figure out what because uh, I, I knew that I wanted to go into STEM, but I wasn't sure because it's so broad, right? That That's so many career fields uh, is onetonline.org what is one resource that was really helpful to me and I was able to look up that's where I, I found computer hardware engineering and it told, told me kind of what the day-to-day -day looks like and uh, what what was required to do the job I mean, as far as you know what degree or certifications um, gener you know salary by area how many people have a master's in the field? All kinds of information like that um, that I found very, very helpful. Um, and like I said earlier, I mean, the, the sky's really the limit, I think, going into the STEM field right now. There's just so many opportunities. And, you know, being with, being with Honeywell, right, one of the nice things about New Mexico operations is that we're, we're a small site. We're, you know, 300 people. And so our day-to-day -day varies a lot. <clears throat> this, this week it was really hands-on for me. Um, a lot of soldering, messing with wires, testing, making sure that you uh, hooked everything up right. And then next week will be if you travel and something completely different. So that's something that is definitely exciting. Uh, the next question is what mid high school activity taught you skills that are a value, valuable to you now. Um, I would say that the clubs and such were really the biggest thing for me personally, the um, sports and, and music groups, just working as a team. It, my experience in the, you know, almost three years I've been in the field is that team, teamwork is, is as important as the technical skills. I mean, you have to be able to, to talk amongst each other um, and uh, middle school and high school is a great time to start getting involved in clubs and taking up a little bit of leadership in your in your in the groups that you're a part of. Um, and uh, that kind of goes into the last question of how would you recommend the students try out STEM related line of work? Um, well, 
for one, like I mentioned earlier, that onetonline.org would be a really good place to start. It is a government funded website that has pretty much every career that's recognized by the government. So, you know, last night I was looking it up just to make sure it was still around and still looked good. Um, and I look, you know, I looked up my job, test equipment engineering, and you can see what you do. And then I looked up my girlfriend's job, who's a pharmacist, and, and it was pretty accurate what she does. So play around with that there. Um, this Discovery Festival is a great way to start to understand what, what opportunities are out there. Um, I'd recommend contacting, you know, talk to your teachers, talk to anybody who has a job that you think that job's interesting and, and try to find out what their day-to-day -day looks like. Um, it's always good if you can find, you know, a summer camp. We we help out with the, the Lego robotics competitions. There's um, a lot of groups like that nowadays. And then um, something else that is convenient nowadays, if you're into software, is they have a lot of coding boot camps. They have, um, and some of them are free even. There's a lot of resources online of courses you can take that are, you know, project-based of to try out hey do i want to do software well i don't know let me try to code for a little bit do i want to do electrical engineering well that's going to be it could be some software but it could be some uh, a lot of hardware which they have a lot of arduino um do it do it yourself at home courses uh, little packs that you can join um so that's what i would really recommend to test out the waters. Uh, Nano Hub is another good resource if you're into like chemistry simulations and such. So those are some of the, the resources I wish I knew a little bit more about when I was in high school and middle school to explore what the options would be. Right. With that said, thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm James and I'm gonna pass it on to the next panelist. Joe Don or Matthew, who's up next? Um, I can go. I think I think Matthew is next, but I can go. Oh, apologies. I'm, I'm on now. Are you? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Great. So, uh, um, my name is Matthew Chavez. I'm a mechanical engineer for Honeywell. I've been an uh, engineer for Honeywell for three years now. Um, my first year, I actually came in as an industrial engineer, which was, um, it's not my degree, but with the STEM background, I fit right in. And that was really one thing that I found with a degree in STEM is that you can be very, it's very diverse in the fields that you can actually fit into. You can go into any type of engineering pretty much and have that base knowledge and you're able to attack it and get get a lot out of it and do really well in it. I've been a materials engineer. I've been industrial engineer and now I'm a mechanical engineer. So, you know, I, being able to adapt to these different engineering fields has been really uh, it's, it's been fairly easy, actually, when you get into it and you you have that base knowledge of uh just engineering or uh, whatever STEM field you're kind of going into. So um, in, uh, in high school, what I really like to do, I always like to tinker with um, engines or, you know, just whatever I can tear apart and try putting back together. I'm not successfully all the time, but, you know, I tried. <laughs> so I found that I wanted to do something in that realm that took that those traits and put them to use and i found the engineering fit the bill really well for me and uh it was really it's been really nice and the great thing about my job now is that i'm doing that i'm building stuff i'm taking stuff apart figuring out how it works and i'm 
putting it back together, trying to make it better for our agents that we're working for. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really um, been rewarding. And I think the overall diversity of my job and I, and James was uh, speaking about this as well as one week, you know, you're working on something and next week it's 180 degrees different. And it's really, really nice. And they constantly innovating, making stuff better, making stuff more reliable or easier to use that way. Uh, the agents out in the field can make, you know, do the best they can with what we can make. And, you know, having that, um, knowing that you're doing your best to get out, get the best product out there is really rewarding to me. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think working in that, in this field here has been great. And I, I would suggest trying to, trying to get into it and doing all you can and, um, you know, just ask questions, ask questions, um, uh, from different people on something you, if it's something you want to do, ask, how do you, how do you do this? How do you get about becoming that kind of engineer or what do you need to do? And I think it's, uh, uh, like I said, it's been really rewarding to me. So yeah, I think I've touched on the main things there. Um, so I don't know if is there is there any anything else that I missed that I wanted to talk about. I think uh, I think that's pretty much it for me and I'll wait for questions till the end. All right, I guess it's my turn. Um, hi everybody. Um, my name's Jodan White. I'm an electrical engineer. Um, I'm also a proud Native American from the Napo Nation tribe. Um, I received my Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from uh, Arizona State University, and that's located in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, I've been in, I've been going about 11 years in my career as an electrical engineer. Um, I've worked in various industries like government, uh, national security. I've also worked in the oil fields and also healthcare. Um, in my current role at Honeywell, um, I've been there for about three years and I've had the privilege to work on several projects, um, anything from design to production. Um, as an engineer there at Honeywell, they really push the boundaries of what's technologically possible to safeguard our country. Um, I've made one of the best decisions to transfer from you know eight years in the oil fields to um, Honeywell and you know it really brings a lot of job satisfaction and being able to be entrusted with delivering quality products and solutions to advance our national um, security and, and homeland security. So one of the good aspects about working at Honeywell uh, we're definitely a family um, I feel really close to all of my coworkers. Um, we really care and trust each other. Uh, we give back to the community like James and uh, Matthew were talking about earlier. Um, I think we volunteer probably hundreds of hours um, supporting our local charities and organizations and you know, Big Brothers, Big Sisters is one of them. And I really get a sense of pride working at Honeywell and every day I feel like I'm adding value as an electrical engineer. So I think one of the first questions was, uh, what skills or talents do you do well at your job that you need to do well at your job? So for me, I think, you know, just going back to the basics, communication is definitely one of the big skills that you probably really need to hone in on. Um, it plays a huge role professionally, you know, even, you know, within your family, you know, communication is a big thing in my family. Um, it's important because being able to communicate with your team and also, you know, your teammates or, you know, your family, understanding, you know, what it is and just voicing your opinion is, is a really good skill to have. Um, 
you know, they're, when you work in, in the STEM field, being able to communicate, you know, with your customers, other departments, um, it, it really just helps let people know what you need or what you need help with and just letting them in your project team know that, that you know, you're able to communicate. Uh, the other big thing I think that is important in, is teamwork. You know, if, if you're currently playing sports or, you know, you're in a club, you know, teamwork, you probably definitely know teamwork is a huge, huge thing to have. Um, no one person can do everything themselves. And I definitely have heard that from my own, you know, family, my grandmother, you know, it, it takes, it takes a whole village, as they say, uh, to, you know, raise, you know, a, a child or, you know, a young engineer. So definitely teamwork is a huge thing. Um, I think if you have good teamwork, people are able to rely on you and you gain your trust in that aspect. Um, another big skill or talent to have, I think is definitely problem solving. Um, I think it's the core of being an engineer um, to be a problem solver. Um, be able to look at something and really analyze it and come up with a solution going forward. Um, that's really true for, you know, if you're going into the electrical engineering field, uh, you're required to think logically and apply that particular rule concept theory to a problem and, and be able to solve it and come out with a solution at the end. Um, for me, I guess the other kind of going a little bit into the STEM field, I think one of the good skills I have, especially if you're an uh, electrical engineer, is just know basic circuitry knowledge. Um, being able to look at a really complex or even just a simple schematic um, and be able to break it down into its basic concepts, uh, understanding and troubleshooting and seeing through all of that complexity, uh, just having your basic fundamental skills and basic understanding of circuitry um, really goes a long way in your career. Um, I definitely use that day to day, um, just even, you know, the basic, uh, the basic equations, you know, I, I, it, I come back to those basic equations and they really help out uh, with, with my work. Um, and then, you know, just grow, grow as a, a student, grow as an engineer, if that's what you want to go into, or what other STEM feel that you're going into, um, just absorb, you know, be a sponge, gain all the knowledge that you can right now, ask questions like uh, Matthew and, and um, James um, stated earlier, definitely ask questions, um, don't be afraid to get out there and and learn, learn as much as you can. You know, definitely for me, I feel like high school definitely went by pretty quick. So, um, you know, just reach out to, you know, your guidance counselors or, you know, if there's somebody in that field that you're interested in, definitely reach out to them. Um, I think the last question, or I think there's two more questions. What level of education, training, certification, or licenses are required for entry into the STEM-related work? So for me, I think having a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering definitely goes a long way. Um, it definitely puts you in that next tier. Uh, I think it opens up a lot of doors for you if you have your bachelorette degree. Um, I know there, we have several techs that have uh, their associate degree um, and I rely on them a lot. Um, so definitely having that piece of paper gets you into the front door. So bachelor's degree, you know, if you can push for that, I would, I would definitely push for that. Um, you know, nowadays it's all about technology. It's all about computers. So definitely hone in on your computer skills, you know, whether it'd be learning, you know, Microsoft Office. I use that a lot every day. 
Um, there's other programs, languages out there, you know, if you're interested in stuff like that. Uh, I use it day to day. Um, I don't know if, if you want to look into it. There's things called like LabVIEW uh, that we use a lot um, for the mechanical engineers. They use AutoCAD. Um, I think they use SolidWorks, uh, Creo uh, to make drawings and, and models. Um, and then for electrical engineers, there's things called P-SPICE. Um, and I think P-SPICE is like a free program that you can use. Um, I would definitely look into that. And then I use also like MATLAB from now and then. So there's just like software platforms that you can, you know, tinker around with and, and definitely expose yourself to those things. Because at some point, I believe if you go into the engineering field, you'll probably hear or use some of those programs. Um, I think the other important thing for electrical engineers is just learning how to read and create uh, schematics in circuitry. So that's another important thing. Um, I mean, if you're if you're going into you know test engineering like James's uh, or you know anything with coding or programming, you know definitely start you know, going to your local libraries and start, I know they have books there that you can learn different um, languages, programming softwares, you know, like Java, Python, C++, you know, it's getting your basics down with that it will, will definitely help you out. Um, and then the other, you know, the other thing that could probably help as well is uh, whatever STEM field you're going into, they usually have a uh, industry standard um, like for us, for instance, we have an industry standard for circuit boards. Um, it's called IPC, you know, and then there's anything with electronics, we go back to IPC um, industry standard. So those, you know, learning the industry specifics, um, specifications, those, those definitely will help you out, uh, I believe, later in your career. Um, so last question. Uh, is what was your favorite class in mid high school? Which ones do you think are useful and helped you prepare for your career? So for me, I definitely uh, loved uh, mathematics and physics. Those are probably my favorite subjects in high school. Um, I actually had um, the privilege I transferred from um, a school on the reservation onto a school off the reservation. And we made that move as a family because uh, the school that I transferred to, when I went into eighth grade, I actually, uh, the math teacher, she was eighth grade teacher and also a high school teacher. And so I tested out of eighth grade and I was actually like a freshman or sophomore eighth grade math level. So she gave me high school work. And by the time I got to high school, I was able to do Concord credit. So it, I don't know if you guys heard of this before, but it's where you do high school classes and it also applies to college credits. So if you have something like that available in high school, it definitely helps to, um, you know, not only have it count towards your high school degree, but also count towards um, your college credits. So by the time I got into my first year as a freshman, I had probably almost half of my, um, my prerequisites already done. So um, definitely reach out to your, your um, guidance counselors. You know, if that's something they can do at your high school, I definitely recommend it. But um, that's about all I had. Um, I'll definitely open up for questions or I'll hand it back to you. Thank you so much for having me um, and uh, look forward to your questions. Thanks. Awesome, thank you all so much for sharing. We actually had quite a few questions come in um, and these are directed toward any of you, sometimes all of you. So we'll go ahead and get started. The first question is from David here in Albuquerque. He asks, firstly, do all of you do a lot of math? And if he's not particularly great at math, how would you recommend that he get better at math? So 
So um, I think we probably all have different answers to this, but I, I was actually pretty bad at math in high school. Um, I don't know. It just didn't, didn't click for me. I didn't, um, I didn't understand why we had to learn it. Um, and it wasn't until college when we started doing calculus and stuff um, and physics that, cause I never, I never had to take physics in, <clears throat> in this or high school um, that things started clicking and I started understanding why we had to do it and why it matters on our day to day. And then you start seeing that it's really everywhere. And it, and it to some level it impacts all of, all of the devices you use every day and, and even how we get, um, how you get your desks and everything to look uniform. Um, but on my day to day, I don't have to do much math and not by hand. So I got better at it in college by just doing, you know, every other problem from the book in the section, right? I used to tutor and I'd tell students that and they'd kind of look at me like, what, what do you mean every other, every other problem? But if you do every other problem from the section, you're gonna get tested on, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll get it. But on a day-to-day, -day, the math that I, I do, and I, I do math, but, you know, I use a calculator and, MATLAB or something to verify. So, um, and Khan Academy is another really good one, but I definitely wasn't a huge math fan in high, high school. So if you feel that way, it's not over. And uh, ended up loving it. You know, maybe, maybe uh, watching some physics videos on Khan Academy would be a good idea to see the bigger picture of why it, why it matters. So luckily in high school, I was pretty good at it, but I had some friends that I helped um, helped study and whatnot because it, like like James was saying, it just, you know, sometimes it doesn't click for, for everybody. And I mean, just getting with other students and studying with them. I mean, sometimes your teacher won't, won't be able to relay the lesson to you the way that you need it told. So you need to maybe find a different avenue uh, of learning it. And uh, I mean, that's what I found was sometimes the friends of mine that were, I was tutoring, they, you know, they were telling me that they just didn't understand what the teacher was saying. And then I would try to try to look at it a different way for them and explain it to them. And all of a sudden it started to, you know, the ball, ball started to roll for them and, I think that's that's one thing that's and, and that that lesson leads into a, a great way of learning just about anything with STEM and, and all together was, you know, if you don't see it one way, try to look at it a whole different way. And, um, and that's that's some of the best advice I have is you know, always try to don't say it's not for you, because I I think it can be for just about anybody, but you just have to. You know, take it the way that you can learn it and learning the way that you learn a certain uh, topic is really, uh, really important. And uh, and as far as my day to day, I don't uh, do a lot of hand calculations. But what I found with all the math that I did in school and whatnot was that if something is wrong on my my model or on some calculations that where someone else was doing or whatnot it sticks out to me as a red flag and it makes me want to go look into that more so it having that that knowledge of uh what it should be and uh just having a, a ballpark idea of what something should be um is really good to pick out the instances where you know that's something is way off and then you don't let something go by into production or into somewhere else, or you just won't pass along a big mistake. Yeah. And I'll just add to what James and Matthew said, you know, you're not alone. You're, you're probably, and I guarantee you're probably many out of maybe your classroom that's struggling with mathematics. Um, you know, seek out to those, those other students that are having a hard time as well, and maybe form a group 
you know, put a group together, put a study group together and, you know, you know, a couple brains put together, you guys will probably figure it out. So that's just my other suggestion is, you know, put a study group together and reach out to those other students that are also struggling. Great, thank you all so much. All right, well, the next question is, why did you choose the college that you went to? And do you have any tips to do well in college? Um, I guess I'll, I'll take a stab at that. Uh, so I, I chose Arizona State University because it was in my home state. Um, they, they offered a scholarship to play uh, basketball. Um, I definitely didn't have the funds, nor did my family have the funds to put me through college. So um, I paved the way for myself through a basketball scholarship. So that's one of the main reasons why I chose um, Arizona State University um, doing well. Um, I was, I got involved early on with a lot of like local um, organizations and chapters. Uh, one of the big ones was ACES, uh, Native American Science and Engineering Society. Um, just connecting with those students that are also going through kind of the same classes that I was, helped me do well. Um, you know, talking to other students that went through that class before you, you know, getting their notes or, you know, just talking to them about different professors uh, helped me out as well. Um, you know, again, you know, I had like my little group of, of friends that I had uh, that were going through the same classes. We, we formed study groups. Um, we got together, you know, after, you know, our classes in, in exchange notes, you know, maybe he heard something that I didn't hear you know, studying together for the exam, you know, that, those definitely help me out. Great, thank you for that, Joe Don. Um, the next question is from Ms. Garcia in Farmington and she is asking, does Honeywell offer any internships? Um. I'll take that one. Um, I, I help run the uh, intern program at uh, for New Mexico and then help out with Kansas City. Yeah, we don't currently do co-op programs. Uh, we've been talking about that, but haven't offered it yet. We do have internship programs um, and you can, you have, you have to be a college student to start applying for those, right? But as soon as you are, I'd recommend, you know, and even do this now, check out honeywell.com slash careers um, and check out all of the um, all the jobs around and just know that, uh, you know, FMNT, Federal Manufacturing Technology, that's who we are. So if you see jobs in Albuquerque or Kansas City, I'm pretty sure that that's, that's the company. So the corporation has a lot more options, but yes, we have interns and we, um, you know, our goal is to hire 80% of our interns. So we only bring on interns that we, we, can, we have enough room to hire. So and that's how I got my job, was I got an internship. So yeah, thank you, good question. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Brittany from Albuquerque is saying, I want a job that lets me travel. Does Honeywell allow chances for traveling? Um, I guess I can answer that. Uh, I, I travel, you know, maybe, I'm gonna say four or five times a year. Um, I don't know how much travel you're wanting, but I do travel, you know, to the suppliers that we uh, purchase products from, um, do a lot of traveling to Kansas City to help out there. Um, I also am part of uh, the outreach program where we go to different career fairs, um, different 
uh, student outreach program. So I do um, fly here and there for that. Um, uh, my boss and one of my my coworkers are actually out in Florida right now, part um, joining the SHIP conference, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, so it really depends on how involved you want to get with other um, things outside of your field. Um, I do know that they do have a rotational program that they offer at Honeywell. Um, I think you do like a year here or a year in Kansas City. And then after a year, you come to New Mexico, do a year here. Um, and then after that, you decide where you want to go. So they, they do offer things like that. Thanks. Good question. And I think, uh, I think it, you can travel more if you want to, or you can travel less if you don't want to. Like I travel probably 25 to 50% of the time at this point. So um and you know management's really you know they check in and they, they they've asked me if that's okay and uh they made it clear that they would bring someone in to kind of offset that um so there's a lot of opportunities uh, some people don't really like to travel for work and i've seen that and i've seen that you know honeywell's accommodated that for them at least our location has so just kind of elaborate you know you can i think the tools are there to to configure how you want your work-life balance to be and how much you want to travel. But the opportunity is there if that's what you're looking for. Great, so it sounds like there is a lot of possibilities if that's what the student is looking for. So that's fantastic. Let's see, so how did each of you decide which type of engineering you wanted to go into? Um, oh, that's a, that's a fun question. Um, so I, I, in high school, I was good at math and good with tinkering with stuff like I was talking about earlier. So I, uh, put those two traits together and mechanical engineering fit the bill. Um, so that was where I decided to go. Um, oddly enough, uh, I've only become a mechanical engineer recently. I've been a engineer for six years. And two of those years was, it has been mechanical engineering. So for the first four years, I was uh, a materials engineer and uh, then um, industrial engineer. And basically I, I call myself an adaptable engineer because I've been kind of all over the place. And uh, I think it was kind of interesting, but yeah, I think uh, if you get into engineering just kind of look at what you what you are uh, what you like to do and then find the engineering that does that great question oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm still trying to figure that out honestly um i got my degree in electrical engineering um and i and i got a minor in computer engineering because I didn't want to stay in college too much longer, but I wanted to do some more computer science classes. And now I'm doing the master's in automatic control, which is electrical engineering, but I still can't figure out between software and hardware. So you don't have to have that answer now, right? Two of my best friends in chemical engineering, the three of them, one went into the field to do it, and the other two decided that they liked the chemistry more than the engineering and went into research. So it's not... Um, it's a little daunting, I feel like, but, you know, I have the job and I'm still trying to figure that out, but I like exactly, so. Yeah, I feel like in the same dilemma as James. Um, so I definitely got my degree in electrical engineering, but when I got out of the college, I went into a petroleum engineer. Um, so I was in oil fields uh, doing petroleum engineering stuff, you know, after that. Um, I went into healthcare, uh, was doing like biomedical engineering, you know, all with the electrical engineering degree. So I kind of jumped around, still trying to figure out what I really wanted to do. Um, and then I landed at Honeywell, uh, really started using my electrical engineering background. Um, and then even now, 
um, I'm starting classes to get my master's in software engineering. So it's definitely not a one-way street. You know, you you could get your degree in one thing, but definitely, you know, branch out from there and, and go and get your, you know, next degree in whatever you're interested in. Great question. Thanks. Thank you. Let's see. So Timothy says, I don't want to go to college. Does Honeywell offer any trade jobs? So there's a lot of technicians that, you know, they, they work on a lot of welders, uh, a lot of machinists, um, you know, they work on trailers and whatnot. So there, there's a lot of opportunity there as well. Um, and uh, I think there's, uh, uh, yeah, some of the, as a mechanical engineer, I work with the machine shop a lot and it's, it's great to get in there and see what, those machinists can do and the welders can do and uh it's they do some outstanding work for us so yeah i believe there is opportunity there fantastic thank you and for each of you what is the most exciting part of your job at honeywell So for me, it's uh, supporting the mission, you know, being part and just giving and putting my part in two cents into, you know, keeping our nation and our national security safe. Um, it definitely adds value. And I feel like what I'm doing is very important and I get a lot of job satisfaction from that. So that's probably the one thing that I love going to work. I love what I do. And I know I look forward to every day, you know, every day is not the same. So definitely um, that's probably the most exciting and important thing to me. Um, for me, it's the, the troubleshooting on site at vendor, like at, at the vendor sites on the, on the testers. Um, it's, you know, the, the time just kind of flies by and it's really, I like the more on hand or hands-on work. So I enjoy, I enjoy when um, get, I get that opportunity, which lately has been pretty often. So it's been great. Uh, for me, it's the innovation. Um, I just love getting a problem from somebody from one of the agents or someone in the field and them asking, how can you make this and starting from an area where it's, it's not there and then completely designing and inventing a product for them. That's been one of the best parts of my job. All right, and it looks like this is the last question we've gotten so far. Um, so what piece of advice would you give to a high school senior who's looking to get into engineering? What's the biggest thing that they should do in preparation for college? Could you repeat that? I'm sorry, I, I got most of it, but. Yeah, no problem, sorry about that. Also, I have a cat and he wants to be a part of every Zoom meeting that I'm in. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, so this is for a high school senior who's looking to do engineering, what's the biggest piece of advice that you would have for them as they prepare for college and getting a degree? Um, I think I think it's important to talk to people or you know go to an organization that you're interested in and and see what they do day to day and see if that's something that you know brings interest to you. Um, you know, if you're starting to look at colleges, definitely look at you know 
the college plan, like the layout, what the classes look like, um, what you'll be doing your first year in college, you know, your second year in college, and and see if those are things you're interested in. Um, you know, it, it helps, I think, to talk to maybe other uh, engineers, you know, I think this is the first step being part of this, you know, panelists and asking these questions early on um, definitely will get you prepared. Um, and then there's also a lot of resources out there, you know, you know, just using Google and Googling, you know, different, different fields, different professions, you know, see, see what you're interested in. Um, and then, you know, I, I definitely am open to, you know, talking to you if, if that's your, what you're interested in. Um, I definitely have a good resource and a lot of people in my pocket that I could suggest that you could reach out to. Um, so yeah, definitely um, reach out to us or, you know, anybody in Big Brothers, Big Sisters. So thanks. So going into engineering, uh, just know that it, it's it's tough, and everyone's been there, and it's 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 great though. It's so rewarding when you come out of it. You know, you go to school and you feel sometimes you do feel overwhelmed, but don't feel like you're alone. I mean, that's one thing. Just don't be afraid to keep going and go for it. And uh, that's you know, it, it, it's been so great to come on the other end and be in this world now and just really enjoying my career, luckily. Um, so just keep pushing forward, always asking questions, always striving to better yourself. And, uh, you know, never let that dream go. If that's something you really want, never let it go. Well, thank you all so much. It looks like that was our last question. Do any of you have any last statements before we close out? Thank, thank you for the uh, opportunity to come and speak. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate you setting this up for all the students, teachers. Uh, I think this is very important what you're doing. So I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And if uh, anyone has any other questions or whatnot, feel free to email them to me and I can answer them as best as possible. And, and I mean, I'm pretty sure all of us are willing to share more and help out as much as we can. Thank you all so much and thank you for sharing everything. This was such an awesome panel and I know that our teachers and our students really enjoyed it. Uh, we wanna give again, another big special shout out to Honeywell. They are our presenting sponsor. Thank you for supporting Big Brothers Big Sisters and supporting Discovery Festival. We couldn't do it without you. Um, as we close out, we're gonna share a short slideshow just thanking all of our sponsors for Discovery Festival. Thank you so much.